Do y'all want to be on camera? You can... <laughs> what? Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our wonderful session today. It's a privilege to introduce Tracy DeLillo. Tracy and I have known each other for that many years, and so it's a pleasure to introduce her to you today. Tracy is actually from Alamo Colleges, and she's an instructional technology manager. Alamo Colleges is in San Antonio, Texas, and it is a community college system that is made up of five community colleges. They evaluated and chose Canvas about five and a half years ago. In addition to her position as instructional technologist, um, Tracy is passionate about teaching and learning. So she has a team that her mission in life is to assist faculty, staff, and students as they navigate the ever-changing educational technology landscape. So it is with great joy and pleasure that I introduce to you today, Tracy. And I want you to follow her on Twitter. She's Library Tracy because guess what she did in her previous life? That gives it away. So she's Library Tracy. Make sure that you comment. Thanks, Asleida. All right. So uh, my session today is Canvas Community, It's Where I Live. And the reason I titled it that is that I spend a lot of time in the Canvas community. I seriously think I spend more time logged into the community than I do in my own house. So I'm not kidding. I, I log in every morning. I'm there all day. I check in. And if you're not familiar with the community, I'm going to teach you some stuff about it. If you are familiar, hopefully you'll get some new tips about it. So I'm going to talk really fast because I have a lot to cover. And then we'll have questions at the end. But um, it, this is the URL for the community if you have never been there. And you probably know or suspect that the Canvas community is the support site for the Canvas learning management system. But unlike other support sites for other technology tools, it is a whole lot more than that. So there's the guides and tutorials that you would expect to see, but there's also webinars. There's the release notes. I'm going to go into all these things in a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of community created content, which is amazing. So there's blog posts and discussions that people start and questions and answers. There's special interest groups. Uh, you can network with people in there. So there's everything you could possibly want going on in the Canvas community. So first things first, um, if you go to that URL you just saw, you can actually see the vast majority of the content without ever logging in. It's all freely available there. But if you do log in, create a profile, then you have the advantage of being able to do all these fun things like bookmarking pages that you find that you like, commenting on people's posts or you know, the release notes or whatever. You can vote on feature ideas, and I'm going to talk more about that in a few minutes. Um, there's, like I said, you can network with people. You can follow people or places in the community. You'll see a follow button almost everywhere, and you just hit follow. You get notifications in the community, which I'm not going to go deep into because that's a little in the weeds, but um, just know that you can follow stuff and bookmark things. And there is a whole gamification aspect to the community, which for some people, is a huge draw, and I have to admit, I was never that person, and I kind of got sucked in. So, uh, so log in, create your profile, and then once you are logged into your instance of Canvas, if you're logged into Canvas and you just go to the community link and hit log in, it'll just bring in your credentials and log you in. So it's really easy to do. So this is the homepage for the Canvas community, and I'm going to point out some of my favorite things I want you to click on. So you'll see the Canvas Guides link at the bottom. The release notes is important. Canvas Live is an awesome space. And up at the top, uh, amongst the wonderful links at the top, Answers, that's where I go to see what people are asking about Canvas. And I'm one of those people who likes to you know, show off my knowledge. So I'll go in there and answer questions. But if you want to ask a question, that's where you would go as well. And keep in mind that the community is not support. I mean, it is in a way, but if you have Canvas support, that's your first place to go. But um, community will get community answers. There's a couple of ways to search in the community. There's a box in the middle of the screen pretty much everywhere you go. But there's also a little magnifying glass in the upper right corner. And that is actually the better way to search. So I talk a little bit about how to search things. 
um, like I said, you can search either way, the middle of the screen or that magnifying glass. For whatever reason, you get two different sets of results when you use the two different searches. And in my experience, and I've been doing this a long time, uh, that magnifying glass is the better search. And I also recommend if you are searching for anything that's a phrase, that's always going to get you better results. Put it in quotes. Like Estelita said, I'm a former librarian, so proper search strategy is very important to me. Uh, so, so that's that's my recommendation. Use that magnifying glass, and then you can filter. Once you've done your search, you're going to see filter options down the left side of the screen. If you're looking for people or groups, uh, the people and places filter is good because otherwise the content pages are going to float to the top. But then within the content, you see there's lots of different things. If you've gone to the Canvas community looking for a guide on how to do something documents is what you want to filter it to. If you're looking for maybe community generated content, discussions, blog posts, if you're someone who learns really well from videos, you can limit it just to videos about topics. So use those filters. So the guides page, the first thing you're going to see are those big red boxes that say instructor guide and student guide and admin guide and observer guide. If you click on those, what you get is a browsable list of help guides for particular particular topics. So, you know, it'll say quizzes and then a bunch of different guides. And it's really easy to browse through there, but of course you could have also gotten to them through the search. But if you look at the Canvas guides, the documentation that's there, I love it because it is short and sweet, lots of screenshots, um, very easy to follow step by step, and they're focused on a particular thing you might want to do. So this is how to add or edit points for an assignment. It may be how to create an assignment, how to submit an assignment if you're a student. Um, it's not just a 15-page guide on assignments. You know, they're very focused, so I really like that about them. And that makes it really easy to share if you're an admin or a faculty trainer and you need to be able to share some information with somebody who's asking a question like, how, how do I edit my assignment? Boom, there you go. So the release notes. Um, if you are still kind of new to Canvas or you're considering it, you may not know that Canvas does do a release every three weeks. And that's actually a good thing. It seems scary at first, especially if you're migrating from a system that has updates once or twice a year. Um, and you think, wow, this is going to be weird. But it's actually great because bug fixes get pushed through, new features, you don't have to wait for a year for them to come out. And it's all very transparent. The beta release notes come out first, and then the production release notes come out. Everybody has a beta environment, so you can test all these features before they make it into the live environment for your users. And uh, people do this. You, I, it's kind of hard to see, but the circle in the top right is the number of comments on this particular beta release notes. There were 72. That's not unusual. Sometimes it's a lot more if you know people have something to say. And people will give their comments, their constructive criticism. Of course, there's always that, yay, I'm really happy that we're doing this new feature. But I have, you know, it, it's, it's not falling on deaf ears. I have seen features where people say, I don't really like the way this is going to work, and here's why. It won't work for my institution. And they'll pull it back and kind of rework it and put it in another release. So don't think that they're not listening to those comments. And it's, you know, it's a community thing. There's a lot of people. You start to see the same names on the release notes. Some of us are hardcore <laughs> about the new releases. So uh, definitely follow the release notes and see what's going on in there. So Canvas Live, this is the space where the live webinars live. But there's a lot more than just webinars. There's uh, meetups, panel discussions. There's now live chats. And this space was revamped uh, less than a year ago. And it's become very vibrant. There's stuff going on all the time, and this needs another slide. So I did a screenshot of what's coming up in the next few days. And honestly, there may be more things that have popped up since I took this. But you can see just next three days, five sessions going on. And you, as a member of the community, you logged in, you can create a session yourself. You don't have to wait. It used to be that Instructure would create the sessions, present the sessions. Now anybody who's a member of the community can do it themselves. You don't even have to have your own web conferencing software. You can use theirs. And 75% of the sessions in the last year were community created. 
And like I said, you know, you don't have to find a slot. You do it whenever you feel like doing it. There's two at noon on Wednesday. So I love that. And you can search and browse through there to see particular topics, what sessions might be upcoming, or what recordings are available from previous ones. And there's also a live indicator on the home page. So if something, if a session's about to start or if it's going on at that moment, you'll see the little you know, thing at the cro top, across the top of the screen and it the little heart blinks. The Canvas Live Love. So you can hop in when you see that. So the other aspect of the community that's fun is the social aspect of it. I joke about the crush the competition part, but some people are very much into that piece of it. But some of the ways that you can socialize is to use liking and helpful to show your appreciation uh, for people's posts or comments. And I'm gonna jump on my soapbox for one second and say, please use the appropriate one because some people just mark everything helpful and now if I respond to a question and I give a link to a very important guide, that's helpful. If I say, wow, that was a tough question, LOL, that's not really helpful, but you might like it because it made you laugh. So back off my soapbox, okay. Uh, you can actually share status updates in the community. This is not broadly used, but I'm one of those super nerds that actually yeah, uses status updates in the Canvas community. I always try to keep it about Canvas. And luckily, I have a couple of colleagues who are in there a lot, too. And so we get into some weird conversations to the amusement of many, I'm sure. Um, I mentioned the answers link at the top of the home page. You can go in there and socialize and help out by looking for unanswered questions and seeing if it's something that you know and sharing that information or just searching to see if a question has been asked, if you have something in mind. And then, of course, you can earn valuable prizes. Not really, uh, but there are points that you can earn. There's badges. There's, you know, Canvas cred. Ooh, there's my Twitter bomb. Okay, so you may know that there's kind of a uh, tweet competition going on, some, some social engagement. And if you are tweeting, here are the questions from my session that you may want to hop on Twitter and answer. What features of the community do you use most if you're currently using the community? And if not, or if you're just kind of still playing around in there, which would you like to explore further? Make sure to use the CanvasCon hashtag. All right, see it? Good. Okay, so talking about Canvas cred, so talking about those points that people get. Kona Jones and Stephanie Sanders um, were the top two in the, in the leaderboard for a long time in the community, and they had such ridiculous numbers of points that I swear they didn't sleep. I don't know how they got them all. But, uh, and I really don't think they got in a cage match, but I can't swear they didn't. But I, I mean, I spent so much time in the community, and I only made it to a sad 14th with nearly 7,000 points, but, on March 1st, that all got level set. We're all starting from scratch. So you're in a good place. If you haven't used the community, hop in and you can start accumulating points because you're not really fighting with anybody anymore. Although I think Kona's already back to the top of the, dang her, uh, I'm not bitter, not at all. So a little bit more about the whole, you know, crush the competition aspect. There are, so this is all very new. And so, uh, like I said, it changed. So there's levels as you get points, you bump up from freshman to learner to educator. There's missions that happen, um, and depending on what you do in the community, you'll see you know different missions that you seem to be good at, you're getting points for. There's quests, which are one-time things that happen, and you get a badge for those. And then my favorite thing that's new is now we as community members are able to give badges and points to other community members. Before we just had to wait for, you know, Canvas employees to give us those things, but now we can kind of share them back and forth. And um, I will actually be giving out some points to anybody who wants to maybe find the page in the community where my session lives and make a comment. I might give you a badge and some points, so there's a little assignment for you. Um, but I, I love that and people are really picking up on this and sharing badges and points. It's really fostering the community a little more even than it was. 
And I've got my little question mark there just because, like I said, this is fairly new and I have not figured out exactly how everything works, but I'm one of those people who doesn't want to know what I'm getting points for. I just like to see them accumulate. Oh, no, I must have done something cool. But if you want to know exactly what you need to do to get points, it's actually written out. You can go to the community and look for pages about how to get points in the community. Very meta. So um, some other ways you can kind of get cred in the Canvas community. There's ranks, special ranks that people have, and you'll see these little symbols next to people's names. So if you see a little panda, and they're kind of tiny up there, but the little panda means it's an instructor employee, and there's different colored pandas for like the product team and the community team. Um, there's red Cs, which mean Canvas coach. These are people who are particularly good at answering questions or teaching about Canvas. You'll see a gray C next to people's names, those are Canvasadors, Canvas Ambassadors. These are people who kind of spread the word of Canvas and are really enthusiastic about talking about Canvas at, at conferences or on social media. And then there's a new one, which is the little flame. It's an expert luminary um, icon for people who have established themselves over time as being really productive members of the community. And then, what I find really cool is the people who sort of found their weird niche in the community and became known as experts. So Dallas Hulsey is a great example. Very early on when the community went live, he posted this blog post about Canvas and Turnitin. And a lot of Canvas customers use the Turnitin plagiarism detection tool as an integration with Canvas. And so he wrote this whole thing all about you know using Turnitin and Canvas, and you can see at the time I took the screenshot, there were 515 comments on this blog post. There may be more now. Various side conversations have branched out. Anytime anybody asks a question about Turnitin, somebody's gonna hop on and be like, yes, but have you asked Dallas about that? So, I mean, it's, it's amazing to me that that happened. And then uh, another good example is Ryan was into mobile, did a lot of sessions about mobile at various conferences, and now he's the mobile guy in the community. Same thing happens. Mobile question, but what did Ryan think about that? Uh, Kristen Lundstrom did a really cool thing where once Canvas Live you know, became a thing that any community member could create a session for, she decided that we should have a live synchronous meetup to talk about the beta release notes. So there's always been the asynchronous comments on the release notes page, but now she hosts a live chat every you know, time there's a release and People get in there and talk about what they think about the release notes, and she keeps the transcript and provides that, and I think it's been helpful for all of us. So that's nifty. And last one that I'll mention is James Jones is a programmer who's very active in the community, and he also um, he gets in there and he sees people saying, I wish I could do this in Canvas. And as a programmer, he writes nifty little scripts, plugs them into spreadsheets so that any faculty member without any real you know, technical skills can use them. And they've done a bunch of webinars about these lately, he calls them Canvancements. And so if you look up Canvancements, you'll see the list of them. And you'll look in Canvas Live, you'll see a bunch of sessions about them. So fun stuff. So a few more cool places that you can check out in the Canvas community, there are groups. Um, and I recommend finding a group that you fit into and joining that group because then you can kind of narrow the focus of the discussion. You see the people who are in there, you know who to follow. Of course, there's a higher ed one, a K-12 one. Canvas admins is a great space if you're an admin. And I know there are some librarians in, the, in attendance at this conference, so they would definitely want to check out the librarian and resources one. Um, so, like I said, if you follow, and you'll see in the upper right, there's a little thing that says following. Um, you can follow the group itself, and you get those notifications about what's going on. Partner sites. So, obviously, I love the community. One of the other things I super love is integrations with Canvas, the LTIs, the apps. And I love the fact that in the community, there are pages for these vendors who provide integrations. Usually, they'll formally formally <laughs> eh, uh, partner with Canvas, and then they get their own space. And this is a place where they can put content up that they want you to know about their product. Um, some of them are super active. 
in there, which I think is a fantastic opportunity for all of us. And I use Aspire EDU as my example because Chris Munzo is in the community, not just talking about his product, but he weighs in on other things. I mean, he's he's gotten really into it. So I really like that about the partner sites. And it's just a very unique and amazing thing to have a space where you can talk to Canvas customers who are also using this third party tool. I mean, that's really unique. And if you are in the market for some new tool, you know, you need a new course of evaluation software or something, you can look through these partner sites and see who's partnering with Canvas and read about their product and connect with them this way. I love it. So Canvas Studio, this has also gone undergone some changes recently. Um, this is where you go to find out what's on the radar, what's in development, what's already in beta, what feature ideas people have suggested, and you can suggest your own if you have an idea for a new feature or a update to a feature. And you can browse the ideas, you can uh, vote on what's there, and um, like I said, it's the process has changed a little bit recently, but you can still give your feedback on what Canvas is working on. And I love the idea that you can submit your ideas and people will vote. So obviously, I love the community. So here's my last few items about um, when you're in the community. If you are gonna go and create content, you know, you want to write a blog post or just start a discussion or even ask a question, it's really important to tag things. Um, and whenever you're creating anything, you'll see at the bottom of the screen uh, a place to add tags or keywords. And again, this is the librarian in me coming out, you know, curate your content, make it findable, because the more appropriate tags you add, the better it's going to be for people to find it when they search or browse, because you can browse by tags as well. Um, and it, there's just this sort of web of stuff. And the same thing about my last bullet point, linking to things. If you write you know, a blog post or a, or a discussion and there's a guide that's relevant to the discussion, link to it. You know, so tag and link to things and we'll just make it a better space, a tighter space. And um, so that's that about tagging and linking. And then, okay, so last, Last few things I promise. Um, when you go to ask a question, search through the questions first before you ask a question for two reasons. One, if the question has already been asked, you will find the answer quicker than asking it and waiting for someone to answer. Then besides that, there's, excuse me, the other part of it is if you ask a question that's already been asked like multiple times, you're just adding more clutter, if you will, to the community. So that's why I say search first, ask later. Follow the good people, and good is in the eye of the beholder. So look for people who seem to be talking about the topics that are important to you. And you just hit that follow button next to their name, and you will see the notifications of what they're talking about. And it's really a very good tool. I, I follow a lot of people. And bookmark anything that you find that you like, just bookmark it, and then you'll be able to find those bookmarks later and just sort of keep them right there in the community as your file of good stuff. And then the last one is just be kind to each other. Um, as I mentioned early in the session, this is all publicly available, the vast majority of it. You know, any person can launch it in the browser and read everything that's there, including your comments. So if you you know, don't want that to be there forever and ever. And I'm not saying don't, you know, engage, don't discuss. And sometimes the discussions get heated, but <laughs> try to keep it civil. There's enough negativity in the social media world. Um, and, and the community is really a great group of people conversing with each other. And let's, let's keep it that way. So that is pretty much all I have. Um, yeah, I would like to thank my colleague, Kenneth Rogers, for creating this beautiful graphic. He also created my Twitter bomb graphics. Uh, but, but this one, I think, is really special. So, so thank you all. And I guess it's open for questions now. You guys are quiet. OK, what if I entice you with a t-shirt? If you ask a question, you get a t-shirt. Assuming that you get a model in the end there.
Yeah, that's a really good question. And there's actually, so the question, if if not everybody heard that, was how do you, how do you um, say no to a new feature or a bug fix? So the answer to that is, one, there's a lot of features that are offered as feature options. So if it's something big, a lot of times they'll say, okay, you have the opportunity to use this starting on this date, but it's you know behind a switch for your campus admin to turn it on or not. And we actually have something right now that was introduced a couple of weeks ago that we've got turned off for now because we want to put it on between semesters. So that's one thing is that if it's one of those, you have that option. And if it's just something that you know Canvas says is coming and you really don't think it'll work, like I said, go to the beta release notes and comment. And best way to do it is with use cases and details. Like, I wish you wouldn't do this right now because, and those are the ones where I've seen, you know, they might pull back, especially if it's something mid-semester and people think it's gonna have a big impact on their users. Um, so those are the two ways. If it's a feature option, you can leave it off. If it's not, then your best way is to comment. And if you're commenting and you're not feeling like the community is listening, you can always reach out to your CSM, your customer success manager, which I've done too. She's in the room. Hi, Jane. So hopefully that was somewhat of an answer. Uh, any other? Yes, yes. Yeah, so. Yeah, if it's a feature option, you could usually keep it off like forever with the caveat that at some point they may take it out of feature option and make it a mandatory part. Um, so, you know, you, you usually have a copious amount of time. And I would say, you know, to, to address your concern about the fact that these releases do happen often, Canvas is really aware of what we're all doing and try, I mean, obviously we're all on different semester schedules and you know, K-12 has different stuff going on. So um, they try their best to not introduce wildly different things in the middle of things. So I, and honestly, we've been doing this for five years and there's been maybe twice that I can think of where a new feature came in at a time that it felt a little overwhelming to people. And even then, usually it was you know something where it was a change to the interface and people screamed about it for two days and then they got used to it. So, And our students are super flexible. And when I say screaming, I'm talking about the faculty because the students just roll with it. Crazy that way. Any other questions? Nobody even wants a t-shirt. It's a silent. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, what do you think about the, the voting and options? Uh, do you feel like we really have to struggle with building an army to get enough people to get your future ideas heard? So I sometimes do, but it's because I'm usually really interested in the admin pieces, things that are going to benefit admins. And of course, there's just less admins voting on things. But this new way of doing things, I think they're looking more at, you know, maybe fewer votes needed for an admin feature. But yeah, we have occasionally sort of had to do media blitzes across our institution, like, hey, everybody vote for this. But we, we really, we rarely do. I mean, we're pretty much keeping an eye on it and trying to vote up what we think is important, but 
most of the things I've found to be important, other than those admin things, um, have gotten votes from elsewhere. So we're all kind of on the same page. Uh, there is an admins group, yeah. Yeah, so and I've seen people do that. If you know, if I'm an admin and I create a feature request about you know a change to permissions or something, um, I, it's very helpful to go to the admin group and say, "Hey, have you guys seen this request I made?" And also, you know, that status updates I was talking about. It's another good place. You know, don't forget to vote on that cool admin feature. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. You can subscribe to the notifications and get everything you know. Anything else? We still got a few minutes. Is anybody paying attention out like in the any questions coming in from there? Yeah. All right. All right, good. <laughs> well, if you guys have no more questions, I'm gonna shut her down. Thank you for coming. Thank you.